But what contributed to all this uh, miserable situation? That was the war, the forever war led by uh, the United States uh, and NATO. Well, you wrote in the New York Times about what you call the speed and scope of the Taliban takeover and the introspection that this has triggered in the West. How can China succeed where others have failed? And how would you measure that success? The international uh, community has witnessed how the US-led military intervention in Afghanistan, which lasted for two decades, has actually failed. The good thing is that the Afghan people have no bad memories of Chinese, because uh, historically China has never invaded Afghanistan, uh, unlike uh, the invaders coming from afar. Therefore, that laid a good foundation for uh, Chinese efforts in Afghanistan. For example, how would Afghans trust Chinese people? One is China's political impartiality can be trusted because even during the Silk Road period, it has been very smooth. So China can be trusted. And then everyone in the world knows that China has infrastructure building capability and industry capability that are next to none. And Afghans happen to be your direct neighbors. Why don't you help them? As you said, you were in Afghanistan in the early 2000s, not long after the US-led war began. What did you see there in terms of the human suffering that we're all too familiar with? Well, that was uh, one of the most unforgettable moments in my life because I have never seen a country so devastated by war. I saw houses on the mountains, but uh, it's very bizarre because all the houses, one after another, have no doors, they have no windows. So it's a very, very bizarre situation. And we delivered the medical assistance to the Afghan hospitals at that time. The best hospital in Kabul has only one medical parameter. That was shocking. The room where I stayed, actually it was the best hotel in Kabul at that time. It was an intercontinental hotel. In my room, actually, the ceilings were actually falling. And they had to support it with a big log of timber. When we were in the lift, the lift simply could not move. We could not move in the lift in the best hotel in Kabul. You know too well human suffering because you've seen it for yourself. And what we're all seeing, at least on the television screens, is a humanitarian crisis that continues to unfold in real time. When you see people clinging to the body of a C-17 aircraft as it tries to take off and falling from that aircraft after it's up in the sky, what do you think? Well, it was uh, the most miserable image I have ever seen. Uh, I will have to consider how this uh, country was plunged into such a situation. So this should not be the case. Throughout the history, Afghan civilization was fabulous. And I even remember that I saw uh, a show of Afghan civilization in British Museum. All the people know nothing except uh, fighting uh, against uh, each other or fighting against the invaders. But what contributed to all this uh, miserable situation. That was the war, the forever war led by uh, the United States uh, and NATO. Well, this is what worries me. I was wondering, does this withdrawal now indicate that the United States and its allies will divert their attention elsewhere, redeploy their resources to that part of the world and potentially recreate the problems that we still see in Afghanistan? The American allies should really learn a good lesson. This probably is the ending of the American-led global counterterrorist war. And it might also be the beginning of American global military retreat from the world. And is certainly the beginning of the so-called extreme competition of the United States with China in the Asia Pacific.